the Jews were taught <clears throat> by the prophets that when the Messiah would come, he would save them. <clears throat> Lexically, Messiah means anointed, and Christ is the Greek equivalent, which also means anointed. That is anointed of God, not anointed of men. This was not man's choosing. <clears throat> so then, but anointed of God for what purpose? <clears throat> Well, he was anointed to save, to deliver. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Zephaniah, Zechariah taught the people that God would not just save from heaven, as he had been doing all along, but that he would send a man to the earth to save his people. So the Messiah was spoken of in the prophets as a king and as a lawgiver, as a judge, as a one that would rule over his own people, and that the other nations would fear and serve. <clears throat> so even we just say the word Messiah or Christ with it, when you think about the word, it comes with the idea of invincible power to save. He's the Christ, the Messiah. <clears throat> he is the Savior. When Jesus was born into the world, this truth was reinforced <clears throat> by the word of God spoken by Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and the hand of all that hate us. <clears throat> and Simeon acknowledged the, that Christ was the Savior. When Simeon saw the, the baby Jesus, he said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation Amen. here in a man. Amen. But now from man's point of view, and you can certainly see this in the scriptural record, of the way Jesus was treated by men, <clears throat> that salvation from man's point of view is a subjective or a relative term. <clears throat> save from what? Or save from whom? Different kinds of people want to be saved from different kinds of things. <clears throat> Saving us from a never-ending supply of food? Save us by making us the world's most powerful military? Or save us by making us wealthy? Or save us from all personal problems? What kind of Savior or Messiah would he be? Uh -huh. Now you know the Lord's manner in, in, the, in his prophecies is to leave things a little bit vague so that it's, it's not completely clear until he actually does it. Then you know that this is the Lord and this is him fulfilling his word. So now the angel who spoke to Joseph, the earthly father of our Lord, revealed further what kind of Savior. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. Amen. Salvation from sins was not something that was commonly known. Throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, though, he was known as one that could save. When the disciples were on the ship in the tempestuous sea, they didn't, they didn't wake up Jesus and say, Hey, come on, help us bail water out of the boat or grab an oar and help. No, he said, Save us. Master, save us. Very short request, but to the point. They knew he could save them. <clears throat> And Peter, when he stepped out on the water and then later he saw the boisterous winds, he didn't turn around back to the ship and say, Hey, men, throw me a rope. No, he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. Amen. He knew he could. That's right. Amen. And when, uh, even when Jesus was being crucified now, this, this word, I was, uh, it was remarkable to me how often this word came up as Jesus hung up on the cross. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 27, they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him and the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Now, they, they didn't believe in Jesus, obviously, but they knew in their mind they had been taught that the Christ was going to be someone who, was, who would save. 
And in Luke's account, the same thing. The people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And later on, one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. <clears throat> now little did those people know that saving is precisely what he was doing. Amen. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He was fulfilling the word of the angel. He shall save his people from their sins. It didn't look like salvation to them, but that is precisely what the Lord was doing on the cross. Amen. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth. This is an ongoing work. He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Amen. So now when we come to the table of the Lord, we come to remember a Savior. Yes. Uh -huh. We don't come here to remember how He provides our meals for us, or how He provides employment, or how He provided spouses and children. No, not at this table. Yeah. This, this is a table with a singular purpose, uh, singular purpose, and it has to do with salvation being saved from our sins. And Jesus does everything that is needed to save us. We live presently in this world as pilgrims and strangers on a journey. This is not, this is not the land of our rest. This is not our home. In fact, we're, this is enemy territory that we're traveling in. <clears throat> it's the territory of the prince of the power of the air. And all around us, this is his environment where he works at the present time only, only as much as the Lord allows. <clears throat> but principalities and powers are exercising influence on men. And yet we, we live in this environment unspotted by the world. <clears throat> by the grace of God, we are able to prepare ourselves as a bride adorned for her husband while in this contrary environment. Now, the reason we're able to do this is because Jesus is a Savior. Amen. It's because of His power to save that we are able to conduct ourselves in this environment and be prepared for Him when He comes again. <clears throat> Amen. All our heavenly resources come from the Savior. Just to name a few, the mind of Christ, the full armor of God, escape from temptation, abundant grace, which is help, abundant mercy and peace and love and faith and hope. All that Jesus supplies is required to be saved from this present evil world. So he is not a Savior. He is the Savior. <clears throat> Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. <clears throat> Jesus is saving presently, and He will yet save. When it looks like everything is against us, really it is not, because we have a Savior. <clears throat> Christ is the Savior, and He's been given all power and authority in heaven and earth. Therefore we say, if God be for us, who can be against us? And in the end, when the, it looks like the wicked have surrounded the camp of the saints, and they're going to swallow them up, yeah. our Lord will suddenly appear, yeah. and He will appear to our glory and to their shame. Amen. When it looks, <clears throat> it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, and we have waited for Him. He will save us. Amen. So there's some saving yet to come. This is the Lord. We have waited for Him. We will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. And part of the shame that we bear in this world is similar to the shame that Christ bore on the cross in that it, it doesn't, to the outward appearance, it doesn't look like we're being saved right now. To those in, on the earth around us, it looks like you're a loser, pal. You're, you, you're, losing, you're losing your life. Yeah. Are we? We're gaining it. Because Jesus, this is how Jesus is saving us. Just as He was on the cross, it, it looked like he, he lost. He, he was dying on the cross. Well, in that act, He was saving from sin. So, this is our work cut out for us too. By losing our lives in this world, we are being saved. 
God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. <clears throat> he was saving on the cross. He was saving when He rose from the grave. He was saving when He ascended up on high. And He will yet come and save us from all our enemies and from them that hate us. Which, by the way, are not all just men. <clears throat> there are wicked principalities and powers that He has already plundered. <clears throat> Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So brethren, remember at this table that Jesus died to save and he lives to save. As we partake of the bread and the cup, think on these things concerning our great salvation. Our Father, we thank you for providing a Savior. We thank you, Lord, that he saves from the right things. We thank you that the main thing has been taken care of, and that is salvation from sins. We thank you for the Lord Jesus. We pray that you would bless us with good and beneficial thoughts of his great work as we partake of the bread and the cup. We pray these things in his name. Amen.